<laughs> so this is uh, where Trump came to visit today. I'm going to drive by there. Check out the school that was recently built here. Where Trump have had his uh, speech today. Let's go check it out. Come on, dude. Foley Road. Looks like they fixed the street. This street used to be really bad. They fixed it up. For Mr. Trump. This is a place right here. Shops, deliveries, and training center. It's a really nice place. Good reviews on Google. Pretty cool. Training center, parking, deliveries. So, this is part of the school, the training or something, construction. Then, over here, you can see part of the school. Uh, about three hours ago, this place was super packed. Media and a lot of people in Texas came out here. Maybe from all over the United States, I don't know. So the last time I drove through this street was maybe about three years ago. Maybe more. And uh, this was just private property. Now, check this out. Okay, watch this. So, this is a, a roof company. And uh, they call it Trumpet. Trumpet Roofing. And so, their little saying is, make your roof great again. <laughs> I like it. Trumpet Make your roof great again. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Right across the street from the school. The guy dedicated the whole name of his company to the Trump. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. 
All right, let's get out of here. Keep on going. Let's go through this little town of Crosby. So, yeah, more flags here and spots where people camped out during the evening or the afternoon waiting for Trump. So this is the road Trump drove in his limousine. The beast. I wonder what happened to that bus that Obama made. I want to see that bus one day. I wish they would bring it instead of that limousine. I don't know. Man, if I was the president, I'd ride in a bus, not a limo. Obama made a Prevo bus to tour the country, and I bet you it's just sitting somewhere in a garage. They don't know how good it feels to travel in a bus, a motor coach. Motorcade watching the motor coach. All right, let's keep on going. So, um, yeah, he did come this way. My wife and the kids came and stood right there by that gas station we just passed. And saw the whole thing, saw the motorcade. My wife made a sign that says, uh, God bless Trump. And he actually waved at her, so that was pretty cool. Let's see if I can get the video. Maybe post it on here or something. He smiled. He was like, he did! Look at my face. It's all red. In, in Google, today, April 10, 2019, you can't see that school. Uh, so you still see the land and the private uh, property that was there, private buildings. But that's why I wanted to come drive by it and uh, see the place where Trump was coming to visit because years ago, that little road down there takes you to the lake of Houston and so there's just a nice little neighborhood down there and that's it that's the end of Foley Road but now there's a major training center there so I think it's on it's sitting on 200 and something acres I'm not sure how many but it's over 200 acres trying to buy a Dodge Stratus back in like the year 2000 so 19 years ago <laughs> so I went to my dad and I said dad uh, they want a co-signer you know the thing about dealerships a lot of times they don't need a co-signer but they just trying to see who in the family has good credit to make it a lot easier for them and they don't have to do all the little illegal tricks they do to um, get someone in a car because if you have okay credit you can get a car it's just a lot easier when you bring a family member that has perfect credit so anyways I had good credit and they still told me no nah, you need to bring someone with good credit so I went to my dad and I said um you know, I got good credit, but they saying I need a cosign. My dad said, uh, well, what, is, what, is, what are you trying to buy? I said, a car. What kind of car? I said, a Stratus. He said, you know those cars are designed to make poor people 
even more poor. And I didn't believe it. I said, nah, I'm still gonna go buy a car, so that's fine, Dad. I'm thinking he just didn't want to sign. Well, good thing is I never did go back because the next day I talked to my friend who had owned a Dodge Stratus for three months. No, I'm sorry, it was six months. And uh, so I told him, I was like, hey man, I'm trying to buy this same car, you know, Dodge Stratus. He said, oh man, I'm trying to get rid of that piece of boop. And I said, what's going on? It's, it's a brand new car. You just got it brand new, didn't you? He said, yes, brand new. Alternator already went out. Battery went out. I got a leak, a coolant leak. I mean, he started talking to me about how nasty of a car this was. And I just simply thought, well, I'm glad my dad didn't go sign. But now, these words didn't just come from anybody. Uh, my dad is a mechanic, was a mechanic. He's retired now. And <laughs> so he deals or dealt with these cars on a daily basis poor people trying to get their little Dodge front wheel drive cars to do something and I'm glad I say this because I'm not talking bad about Dodge I'm talking about front wheel drive Dodge cars front wheel drive Chevrolet's front wheel drive Ford's Basically, anything that is made here in the U.S. Uh, it turns out the technology was done here back in the 70s, 60s maybe. Front wheel drive was okay. Uh, it was a technology that could have worked. The main reason behind front wheel drive cars is to give the passenger space um, or to give more space uh, in the cabin, in the inside the passenger area. That is the reason for front wheel drive cars. Uh, in other words, they're trying to get rid of that drive shaft that goes in the middle of the car, the transmission, and all that. So that's the whole idea behind front wheel drive cars. So the Japanese took it and perfected it. Not, no, 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 no. I don't want to say perfected it because, you know, I'll still drive a rear wheel drive car rather than a front wheel drive car. It don't matter what it is. So, but there is, uh, in my opinion, Toyota front wheel drive cars are the best. Uh, now, the, uh, I'm saying this because I've owned these cars. Okay, I'm not making this up. I'm not getting this from my dad, even though, as I just told you, my dad was a mechanic for all these old cars. See, like right here, here's a, a Ford Taurus. I'm really surprised this car's on the road. That's an old car. And I think a lot of times it, it's a car that belongs to a mechanic. That guy is a mechanic. And he can keep it going. It's either that or a family that doesn't know that those cars are trash now and they don't want to realize it and they keep paying to fix it. But like my dad said, by the time you're done paying all these mechanics, you already paid for your car twice. If you include all the repairs that went into a, a front-wheel drive American car throughout the years you own. So, that's what happens with these front-wheel drive cars. So, America made some good front-wheel drive cars, but the 
the way the engine was placed, it was, it had to have been in line. In other words, the transmission still pointed towards the back of the car and the front of the engine still pointed towards the front of the car. Uh, but then it had a, a, a U-turn kind of uh, shaft. I don't know what it's called, but it's a shaft that basically made a U-turn and then used the front wheels to pull the car. Now, I think there's an Oldsmobile Toronado, something like that, and there's a GMC Motorhomes from the 1970s, and there's like a Cadillac Eldorado. These are the cars I'm talking about. They're still running today. The GMC Motorhome is a front wheel drive motorhome. It's a big, heavy vehicle, and it's still rolling. It's still going. So there was nothing wrong with those. Other than the weak point in those cars was the suspension because they had to pack so many things, mechanical things, that they had to sacrifice the suspension. So, where America messed up and uh, American manufacturers messed up is when they turned the engine sideways. They turned that engine sideways and the transmission also sideways. And that is the problem. So the way I see it is this. A person, a human being, can walk up a hill. So I got a phone call, that's why I had to stop for a little bit. But um, So you have to imagine yourself walking up a hill using your feet, of course. And you notice that your body kind of leans forward as you're trying to take these uh, good steps, solid steps to push yourself up, up the hill. That is a representation of a rear wheel drive car going up a hill. Now, I'm going to give you the human side of a car going up a hill that is a front wheel drive and this is how they do it this is how you would do if you were a front wheel drive car you would lay on the ground sideways and then try to roll up the hill while laying down across the pathway impossible I mean it would take forever it would take so much effort to roll up a hill well in essence that's what a front wheel drive car that has a motor across that's the type of work it's doing you're using it sideways that does not make any sense at all you do not use force or a mechanical device sideways and you do not roll up a hill sideways that's impossible but you can run up a hill using the bottom or the back part of your body which is your feet you can run up a hill but you can't roll up a hill that's a front wheel drive car. Okay. So, anyways, we have a feeling that Trump rolled through this place. I'm not sure if he actually went through here. I don't see any flags or anything. So, I don't know. But this is still 2100 that goes into Crosby. And then uh, we're going to get to I 10. that area that is really bad in traffic right now because a barge hid the bridge or the one of the supports for I-10 crossing the river because basically we're driving along the river the San Jacinto River if 
I turn, if I make a right right here at any of these little streets, I end up at the San Jacinto River. This place here is called, uh, we're in Highlands. Highlands, Texas. So, I make this drive a lot when I'm trying to get to I-10. It's getting late. It's um, 8.03 p.m. So the sun's about to go down. It's getting dark out. But I just wanted to come drive the same drive that probably Mr. Trump drove and got to see. Oh man, I was so busy at work I didn't get to uh, drive over here and watch him. But it must have been cool. My wife did make it out here and got to see him. So here you're going to see the river. There it is. And there's the bridge that got messed up by the barge. So we're going to see a little bit of traffic here and then I'll stop recording. Because I got to stop here and pump gas. Actually, wait a minute. Traffic is not too bad today. Look at that. They're moving. That's... Wow, what's going on? Look, this is I-10. We know they still have all the cones and all that up. They're doing pretty good. The ferry is over here. This road over here takes you to the San Jacinto Monument and the ferry to cross the San Jacinto over to Pasadena. Which we'll do another day. I gotta stop here and get some gas. Alright, that's it for today.